Hello and welcome to episode 13 of my sports and exercise science series. We're going to be following on from episode 12 by learning about the short-term responses to training. By the end of this episode, you will understand how the demands of exercise are met by the cardiovascular, respiratory and muscular and nervous energy systems. When exercise commences, the systems of the body immediately respond to the demands of that exercise and a warm-up is designed to initiate this process and prepare the body for the demands of the exercise that follows. A well-designed exercise program starts at low intensity and slowly increases in intensity up to the level that the athlete is expected to work at during the training session. This may involve running at slightly faster speeds or stretching over greater ranges of movement to gain muscular pliability for the exercise that follows. Starting with the cardiovascular system, as exercise, particularly aerobic exercise starts, there is a significant increase in the demand for energy. These energy demands stimulate the need for more oxygen to be delivered to the working muscles. The demand for more oxygen results in an increase in heart rate to ensure that the muscles working receive adequate amounts of oxygen and nutrients and that the waste products from energy production are removed. There may have already been an increase in heart rate before any activity has occurred and this is because there is often an anticipatory rise in heart rate produced by thinking about the exercise to come. This is because the anticipation of the training session can lead to the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system, which releases adrenaline. Stroke volume also increases. Stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected from the heart with each heartbeat. Stroke volume increases for two reasons. First, exercise increases the amount of blood returning to the heart, known as venous return, and thus there is more blood available to be pumped from the left ventricle. Secondly, the increased adrenaline that has been released prior to exercise. And also, when exercise starts, it acts on the heart muscle and increases the strength of contraction on the ventricles, causing greater emptying of the left ventricle. This dual impact can result in stroke volume doubling from around 70 milliliters to 140 milliliters. Cardiac output also increases when we exercise. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped from the heart every minute. It is the product of heart rate and stroke volume. Thus, if both of these increase, so will cardiac output. Finally, blood pressure increases. As learned about in episode 10, blood pressure is the amount of pressure exerted by the blood on the artery walls. During exercise, the volume of blood ejected by the heart increases, as does the force at which it is ejected. In particular, systolic blood pressure, which is the blood pressure exerted on the artery walls when the heart pumps, increases significantly. Diastolic blood pressure, which measures the pressure blood exerts on the artery walls during the relaxation phase of the heart, increases slightly in response to the increased amount of blood in the arteries. If the arteries have been narrowed, diastolic blood pressure will increase more significantly during exercise. Let's now move on to the respiratory system. The respiratory system is primarily responsible for getting oxygen into the body and removing carbon dioxide. As oxygen demands of exercise increase, there will be a significant impact on the respiratory system. Exercise causes an increase in breathing rate. Breathing rate is stimulated by the amount of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream, which is present as carbonic acid. The increase in pH of the blood is detected by the chemoreceptors that send messages to the respiratory center in the brain, which controls breathing rate. Breathing rate increases because of the more rapid and forceful contractions of the respiratory muscles, the diaphragm and intercostals. Tidal volume increases with exercise, which is the amount of air inhaled and exhaled with each breath as the depth of breathing increases. Minute ventilation also increases as the rate of breathing does. Exercise does cause a decrease in residual volume, however. Residual volume is the amount of air left in the lungs after full exhalation. It is measured at around one litre, but can decrease slightly if an athlete forcefully empties their lungs to enable them to subsequently breathe in more air on inhalation. So what does the neuromuscular system do? During exercise, muscles require an increased supply of oxygen and glucose to create energy in the form of ATP. The main short-term responses of the neuromuscular system are increased blood supply and availability of oxygen owing to vasodilation within muscles, redirection of blood flow to working muscles from other organs, 
increased elasticity of muscles due to the increase in muscle temperature, increases in secretion of synovial fluid in the joints and an enhanced ability of ligaments to lengthen, increased speed and intensity of nervous impulses, increases in the amount of force produced by muscles and faster reaction times, and finally an increased recruitment of motor units in response to increases in exercise intensity. Exercise also has short-term effects on the endocrine system. These include glucagon and insulin, because with greater demand from muscles for glucose in the blood, glucagon is secreted and insulin levels are suppressed to ensure blood glucose levels do not drop too low. Adrenaline may be released to assist cardiac activity during exercise. Endorphins block your sensitivity to pain and can reduce stress and anxiety to reduce a feeling of euphoria. And finally, testosterone and growth hormone, as libido and confidence may increase along with an increased ability to be able to recover from the effects of exercise. On the skeletal system, the short-term effects of exercise include the start of bone remodeling and strengthening. Over time, bone strength and density increase, circulation of blood and synovial fluid improves, and your strength and range of motion increase. However, due to the time taken to enact change on bones, as opposed to a quick regulatory body response, most effects are longer term through sustained exercise. Short-term effects mostly are linked to tissue recruitment around bones, for example tendons. Finally, physical activity has huge potential to enhance our well-being. Even a short burst of 10-minute brisk walking increases mental alertness, energy and positive mood. The short-term effects of exercise on mental health can be a positive impact on mood, reduction of stress and anxiety and improved self-esteem. That concludes the 13th episode of my sports and exercise science series. I hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to like and subscribe for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub, I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you in the next episode where we begin study on the long-term responses to training.